air conditioning systems vary widely in design, application, and sometimes how they exchange or move heat. In this video, we will overview and explain some different types of systems, their components, and where they're typically used. Split AC systems and heat pumps consist of two main parts, generally speaking. An outdoor unit containing the compressor and condenser, and an indoor unit featuring the evaporator and generally the metering device. These split system units use a copper line set to connect the indoor unit to the outdoor unit. The line set contains the liquid line and the suction line or the liquid line and the vapor line in a heat pump, because heat pumps can reverse the refrigeration cycle to provide heating in addition to cooling. Commonly used in residential and light commercial settings, split systems move heat between the indoor space and the outside air. Straight cooling air conditioners are often coupled with a gas furnace for heating. Systems that can utilize a heat pump and a gas furnace as backup are also getting more common, and these are called dual fuel or hybrid systems. A package unit combines the compressor, condenser, and evaporator in a single outdoor unit. They're often found in commercial buildings installed on the ground or on a rooftop. But there also are types of residential applications that use ground-based package units such as manufactured homes, and rooftop residential package units are also common in some western states. These units rely on ducting the indoor return air out of the structure, over the evaporator, and back into the structure. PTACs, or Packaged Terminal Air Conditioners, and VTACs, vertical terminal air conditioners, as well as window units, are self-contained units often used in hotels or apartments. These are compact air conditioners, often with lower efficiency than other options. Window units are installed in windows, serving single rooms. PTACs and VTACs don't rely on the window, but they do rely on an external penetration to exchange heat to the outside. Ductless or mini split units, along with variable refrigerant flow and variable refrigerant volume systems in commercial, offer precise temperature control to multiple zones or rooms, often without ductwork or with less ductwork. These units are split systems generally, with outdoor and indoor units. The smaller residential versions of this technology, usually called mini splits or ductless, and the larger systems with a higher number of heads or fan coils are called VRF, Variable Refrigerant Flow, or VRV, Variable Refrigerant Volume. and they're ideal for buildings where duct installation is impractical, efficiency is a priority, or precise temperature control is desired. In most cases, these systems are more compact. And in the case of ductless or mini splits, the cooling metering device is located outdoors. This makes both connecting line set lines cold, requiring insulation on both lines. Water source or geothermal systems use the stable temperatures of water or the ground to exchange heat rather than outdoor air. These systems are highly efficient, but they require access to a ground loop or a well. All of the refrigeration components are inside, including the compressor so noise is a consideration in the design. Swamp coolers, or evaporative coolers, use the cooling effect of water evaporation to lower air temperature. 
This is known as adiabatic cooling. These systems are ideal for dry climates. They pass the air over water-saturated pads, cool it via evaporation, and then circulate it through the space. These systems are only effective in dry climates, and water treatment is a major factor to prevent microbiological growth. Finally, we're going to talk about monoblock, heat recovery chiller, and secondary fluid systems. These systems contain all components in a single unit and can produce both a heated and cooled fluid simultaneously. They can be used for indoor heating, indoor cooling, dehumidification, domestic hot water, and anything else requiring heating or cooling. They do require more complicated designs and a place to put the excess heating or cooling depending on the need. Many people, including myself and my friend Michael Hausch, see these systems as the future in many aspects of the HVAC trade. Each air conditioning system has its specific application, advantages, and method of heat exchange. Selecting the right system depends on the building size, climate, and specific heating and cooling needs. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.